Well, hey, everybody, this is Chris DiFurio with Keys to the Shop, and welcome to another edition of Shift Break. Today's episode is brought to you by La Marzocco, who's been making espresso machines by hand in Florence, Italy since 1927. And I have been using La Marzocco for so long in my career. I always have loved working on their machines. They are dependable, consistent, beautiful, and innovative. And this is why some of the world's best coffee bars choose La Marzocco as the heart of their business. A great example, of course, KB90 espresso machine that uses straight in locking portafilter technology. La Marzocco invented this to help solve ergonomic issues for baristas. You've got scales built in the drip tray for accuracy of extractions. You've got the auto flush feature, which keeps things clean, workflow moving. It's just one example of a host of different espresso machines that La Marzocco has created to suit your specific need. Check them out at LaMarzocoUSA.com, but even better, reach out to them. Info at LaMarzocoUSA.com will get you one of their salespeople, and they can walk you through the process of getting the right equipment for your coffee bar. I've always loved working on La Marzocco espresso machines, and I know you will as well. So check them out again over at LaMarzocoUSA.com. Today's episode is also brought to you by Espressly, who is busy creating custom branded mobile apps for all of you wonderful uh, independent coffee shop owners out there who really want to stand out from the crowd. You're not just a dot on a map with Espressly because your customer has on their phone your world, your custom brand. When they want coffee, they just open your app and it's all right there. Second best thing to being in the cafe. And uh, there's a no risk model with Espressly. There's no setup or development fees. You get a drive through payment scanner, receipt and label printing capabilities. All of the data is stored in the app and it integrates with some of the world's best payment processing systems. And as you can guess, that includes Square. So I think this is a really great option for you. Go ahead and reach out and have Espressly get started on your app today. All of that is available to you at the website, espressly.co. That's espressly.co. Okay, everybody. Well, today I wanted to talk to you about resentment fun topic, right? (laughs) Where most of the strife that we see in the cafe can be boiled down to some kind of uh, lack of clear expectations and follow through the broken promises, just built up tension over the course of months and then years. And what ends up happening is we, we, when we don't practice this kind of relational hygiene where we are constantly focused on taking care of each other and making things more clear, making things more um, communicating better, improving ourselves in the way that we serve other people, then we get these kind of breakdowns where we start to harbor resentment. Now, this is something that we're really used to when it comes to customers. Uh, We have talked on the show in prior shift breaks about how we will create caricatures of customers based only on the interactions we have with them for uh, these 30 second bursts on a particular uh, hour of the day where they might come in and they order uh, a, a cappuccino or a latte. And because we come with all of this baggage, we bring emotionally to the cafe. It's all kind of unresolved tensions and uh, loose ends in our own lives and our own emotions. We start to interpret the world around us in a way that sort of it, it tends toward not being very generous. So somebody isn't as chipper as they might usually be, or they're just not an outgoing, gregarious person, we automatically assume that they're a jerk. We say, oh, that customer was rude. They didn't do this or they didn't do that. We've got all these kind of hoops that we want people to jump through. And when they don't jump through it, we start to harbor resentment toward them. We start to create sort of a file in our head about this person and there can only be one correct explanation and usually it's the one that makes us out to be the victim and them out to be the perpetrator of whatever thing we're we're thinking that they're the perpetrator of and as usual there's always a little hair or shred of truth mixed in with a whole lot of assumption and assumption i think is one of the biggest cornerstones of resentment um along with just kind of 
writing ourselves out of the equation in terms of culpability for what what's happened. So um, with customers, we do tend towards this and it's hard for us to undo when we've created this interwoven uh, uh, mass of assumptions. It's hard to untangle that. As a manager and an owner, for example, what you do is you create these caricatures of your baristas. You just create these ideas that this generation doesn't want to work hard, they are lazy, and they're hard to you know, pick up on things. And we start to create these character traits that cannot be undone. This is who you are. This is you. It's not a behavior which can be changed. That wouldn't be convenient for us because then that means we could still work to help as an owner or an operator, as a manager. We still have hope. But by assuming these character traits that demonize somebody who we have resentment towards, what we do is we create a stalemate. There's there's no moving forward. And so we're constantly sort of trying to figure out how to solve a problem that we are actively reinforcing, which is this person cannot change. I don't view them as somebody who can change. Um, I don't have any part to play in any of the actions that they're doing that I don't like. Now tell me, how are you supposed to deal with that? Except to just say, well, I need to hire a whole new crew of people. Now guess what's going to happen to that crew of people? you're going to, just going to have the same thing happen. And you know, the saying is if you wake up and I'll make this a little, you know, more <laughs> family friendly, if you wake up and you meet a jerk, then you've met a jerk. But if you wake up and everybody is a jerk all day long, then you're the jerk. That is 100% one of the things you should think about you and your authority in a cafe setting under pressure with people who, especially in uh, the first jobs or people who are really getting a feel for what they want to do in life in the younger generations, that's a great place to be as a human being. And you have this great opportunity, but if you view it as this great liability and you create all these assumptions and resentment towards them, even before things have begun, then you're going to get you're going to reap what you sow, basically. So always seeing your staff as a liability is just reinforcing your ability to lie about them. Okay. See how that works? It's just going to get you more of the same stuff. I've talked to people in the past as you know, clients that have written job descriptions and manuals that read more like the onboarding documents to a prison than they do to a cafe because they talk about all these different rules, not to break them. Here's how we can fire you. By the way, we think you're going to screw us over, so don't do X, Y, and Z, da, 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 right? So any whiff or hint of those things that you are already looking for you're going to, with your confirmation bias, see that, and you're going to build resentment. And on top of this, there's just the built-in inevitability of mistakes being made in the coffee bar. And when mistakes happen, you can treat them as, okay, mistakes happen, or you can start to build up resentment that you have to deal with mistakes. And I sense a lot of resentment from operators when I start hearing people complain about the staff that they just can't get it after a week or two. Uh, it's really difficult to make them learn all of these things. And they're just not giving enough time, patience, uh, curiosity toward their own processes and systems to truly justify their frustration. Um, usually our frustration boils down to I am really angry that this is not easier. I thought it would be easier. And I, rather than admitting that I was wrong in my assumption toward whatever you know project or uh, business this is, I will assume that I just have the wrong people. And they become the scapegoat that keeps you back from growing, that keeps you back from maturing. As a, as a professional. So even if you do get more business, even if you do gr expand your business through capital uh, investments and things like that, because of this attitude and this resentment, 
you're not going to be able to handle that business because people will not be able to handle you and you won't be able to handle them. And this is how you end up with large, sprawling businesses that are void of culture. They're void of, let's say, good culture. They, they have more of a toxic, fear-based, cardboard cutout, automaton-style culture. And that is not a very good competitive strategy, <laughs> you know. Rather than let resentment build, we need to counterbalance ourselves toward relational harmony, sh keeping short accounts with people, and making sure that we factor in ourselves first before we start creating caricatures about staff and you know the sweeping judgments that create a scenario where there is no improvement that is possible. Um, and it's subconsciously kind of putting you in this position where you, you are to be pitied. And, and that's kind of what your goal is. Your goal is not to get better. Your goal is to make people feel sorry for you. And you might be successful, but that doesn't help your business. Um, so not only is this important to not let resentment build toward your staff, um, it is also important as a barista or somebody who has a boss, if you're a manager and you have the owner as your boss or your GM or somebody like that, anyone who has somebody that they are uh, accountable to, you have to make sure that you are weeding the garden of your mind to not let resentment spring up and choke out the life that is not just going to be something that you uh, are cultivating for this particular job. That That's the thing is like, you might not stay with this company forever, but what you do cultivate here will go with you to the next job. You have to make sure you understand that because you might say, oh, it's my boss's fault. Maybe it is, but maybe it's not. Maybe it's your fault. Maybe you are actually not a very good employee. <laughs> you know, I've been on both ends of this. Yeah, definitely. And it is hard in the moment to really swallow that. But if you practice this kind of self-awareness, humility, and genuine curiosity that drives you to be honest about the situation, doing this often will help you avoid building resentment where you create a category in your mind and say, all bosses are bad. All managers are out to get you and use you and abuse you. And that automatically does the same thing that owners do to staff where they say, this generation is lazy. Everyone's out to steal from me. Baristas are thinking they're out to exploit me. They're out to, you know, lord it over me and etc. You owe it to yourself. No matter what station you find yourself in, the boss or having a boss or both, you need to tend the garden of your mind and emotions to we to get rid of the weeds of resentment before they spring up and start choking the life out of the things that you can get from that environment, from that relationship. Resentment is a killer. It's just like a gossip in a coffee bar. It just creates toxicity and toxicity in a culture usually starts on the individual level and then works its way outward collectively. And so I wanted to talk about that today because I, I do think that it's one of the things that can ruin an otherwise uh, great opportunity for you as a boss, as a uh, staff member or an employee. And I have let it you know, crop up in my life throughout the years in various ways um, in, in cafes. And I know the end of it is, is not great. And so I would beg you to consider this today. Search yourself and see if there is something there that needs to be dealt with and put it to rest. Put it to rest and say, I owe it at least to myself and my own personal growth and even just those who I will influence in the future to put this resentment to rest and go forward from here without ruminating on these things, but cultivating something that will be life-giving to you and others in the future. And so again, I hope this has helped. Thank you very much, everybody, for listening. And I will see you here next week on another edition of Shift Break from Keys to the Shop.